Welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to take a look at Aptera's Skin Cooling Thermal Management System. Aptera just released a new video giving us a basic look at their battery thermal management system. The video shows an illustration of coolant fluid being channeled throughout the skin of the vehicle. This is a completely new approach to battery thermal management. This system would give the coolant more surface area for heat dissipation, and the dissipated heat could be used by other systems such as climate control. Before we look at what Aptera is developing, let's first try to get a basic understanding of battery thermal management systems. See, the thing is, I love fast cars. And if you're like me, when you see a fast car, the first thing that comes to mind is the type of engine and technology behind the performance. In the case of EVs, we think about motors instead of engines. But really, if we want to have a good understanding of what makes electric vehicle performance so amazing, we have to understand the source of their power. And that is the battery system operating within a peak performance range. And temperature plays a big role on battery performance. Once you turn on your vehicle and start driving, it starts to draw power from the batteries. This outflow of energy creates a good amount of heat in each battery cell. The amount of heat generated is proportional to the amount of energy being consumed, so the colder the AC and the faster you go, the more heat is produced by the battery pack. The issue here is that the performance of lithium ion batteries are greatly affected by temperature. At colder temperatures, charging speed gets slower and the vehicle performance gets reduced and the battery range drops significantly. When batteries get above 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit, performance degrades and serious damage can occur leading to thermal runaway. So if you want to keep your batteries within that optimal temperature range, you need a good battery thermal management system. The role of the battery thermal management system is to monitor and maintain a stable battery temperature, detect and warn the owner of points of failure, and in an emergency, suppress thermal runaway as much as possible. It can be overstated that failure to maintain appropriate battery temperature leads to battery degradation or worse, thermal runaway. In the last episode, I went over the different components in a battery cell. If you haven't seen that episode, I suggest checking it out. In that episode, we talked about the main parts of the battery being the anode, the cathode, a separator, and some sort of liquid electrolyte which is highly reactive and flammable. When a battery is overcharged, discharge at a fast rate, or temperature stays above 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit, the liquid electrolyte starts to turn into a gas and expand the battery cell. Manufacturers design a venting system in their batteries to avoid catastrophic failure and to allow gas to safely escape the cell, in turn reducing the swelling in the battery which would have led to a critical failure. If the temperature remains elevated for a significant amount of time without being properly cooled, this will lead to thermal runaway. The battery starts to swell as the venting system gets overwhelmed with more and more of the electrolyte turning into gas. If left unchecked, the pressure buildup within the battery cell will cause the separator to crack, which in turn allows the anode and cathode materials to come into direct contact. This combination creates a highly energetic chemical reaction, which when combined with the already flammable electrolyte leads to an uncontrollable cascading battery fire situation. This is why it's critically important for all EVs to have a robust thermal management system. There are multiple methods of managing battery temperature. The two methods we'll be looking at in this video are the ones discussed by Aptera, and those are air cooling and liquid cooling. Air cooling is when manufacturers use blower fans to funnel the outside air to cool the battery system. This method has obvious drawbacks and limitations. Such a system would work better in colder climates and in winter months, but would not work as well in tropical or desert conditions or in summer months. In my opinion, this would not be the preferred cooling system in a high performance EV. Liquid coolant, on the other hand, uses a glycol coolant to regulate the temperature of the battery pack. The coolant circulates throughout the battery pack, removing excess heat. Then the coolant passes through a radiator, which in turn reduces the temperature. Then the cycle repeats. In the case of Aptera, after the coolant flows throughout the battery pack, it would then be channeled through the skin of the vehicle via microchannels. The large surface area of the skin would serve as the radiator to dissipate the heat, and then the cycle repeats. The liquid coolant system would perform significantly better for high-speed EV application. Aptera's approach of using the vehicle's skin as the radiator is innovative and could potentially save a lot of energy, reduce the number of parts needed, and speed up manufacturing but there are significant challenges with this approach. 
In typical EVs, the coolant is limited to the battery pack and the radiator in the chassis. This keeps the coolant in a more controlled environment and away from direct sunlight. Aptera's microchannel skin cooling approach means that some of the coolant would be in various parts of the vehicle shell at various temperatures. This could have some potential benefits in winter as warmer coolant from the roof line and side panels would help the battery get up to operating temperature more quickly. Conversely, the warmer coolant might not be as effective at maintaining optimal temperature during summer months or in more tropical zones. The other issue I foresee with the skin cooling system is what might happen in an accident. Keep in mind that the battery pack is still very hot after an accident and still needs to be cooled down. In a typical EV, the coolant would continue to reduce the battery temperature even after an accident. This allows the battery to return to a safe range and avoid thermal runaway. Now, the comparison I'm going to make here is purely hypothetical as Aptera has not completed the design work on their thermal management system. But potentially, if the skin of Aptera is ruptured during a crash, this could lead to a loss of coolant and thereby reducing the amount of heat which can be safely dissipated from the battery pack. In order to avoid this issue, Aptera might want to adopt a variable system where the coolant in the undercarriage can be isolated from the rest of the vehicle in the case of an accident. This would essentially create a dual coolant zone system. The other option would be to rely on a foam or gel suppressant in case of a thermal runaway scenario. As of today, Aptera's plan is to have a more traditional battery cooling system combined with a radiator and or uh, perhaps a HVAC system to manage the temperature while they continue to develop the microchannel skin cooling system. I hope you found this information useful or at least entertaining. Please leave me a comment below letting me know what you think or drop me a voicemail at 855-4-REBOOT. That's 855-473-2668. Leave me a voicemail on this topic or any other topic and you just might make it on the next episode. Don't forget that we need your support to keep this channel going, so please hit that like button right now. And if you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. You can also support the channel by joining our Patreon page or by going to AptaraReboot.com and buying some of the items there. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.